Robert Brown from the John Birch Society still owes me $10,000 for proving him wrong by providing evidence of delegates to the convention that claimed they had the authority to draft a new system of government. So Robert, buddy, my Venmo account still empty. Please uh, start the deposits fairly soon, okay? Christmas is coming. <laughs> All right, I have proven with delegates, James Wilson of Pennsylvania and Rufus King from Massachusetts already, but this one is really touches my heart because this gentleman I'm gonna to introduce to you is just a phenomenal guy who we don't know about. This one's gonna blow your mind, and if it does not convince Robert Brown to pay me the 10 grand, then I guess we'll see what kind of person he truly is. Get ready to have your constitutional history rocked on all things Article 5. Welcome to All Things Article 5, where we dive deep into the Constitution's amending provision to break through all of the misinformation out there to get to the truth. Whether you're an Article 5 activist like myself or new to the subject and want to learn more, this is the place to be. I guarantee you won't want to miss an episode. So make sure you hit the uh, subscribe button so that you're notified when these videos drop. So sit back and join me as we learn from the past to get engaged in the present in order to change the future. Now this episode is near and dear to my heart. We are going to take a look at one of the youngest delegates at the 1787 Federal Convention, a delegate who contributed greatly to the convention and possibly even responsible for more provisions in the Constitution than any other framer. Yet, he has been virtually forgotten, or should I say erased, from our history. This delegate is Charles Pinckney of South Carolina. Pinckney served in both the South Carolina State House and Senate. He was a delegate to the Congress of the Confederation, uh, became a U.S. Senator, Minister to Spain, member of the U.S. House of Representatives, and Governor of South Carolina. In my opinion, and based upon my research of Article 5, Charles Pinckney is the hero and originator, originator of the Article 5 Convention. And in a future episode, I will explain why. But for right now, I'm just going to get Robert Brown of the John Birch Society to be a man of his word and to pay me the $10,000 that he has offered to anyone that can provide a quote from a delegate of the convention in 1787 that claimed they had the authority to propose a new system of government. Pinckney was a man with a plan, and wait till you see this, folks. He was working on revising the Confederacy long before the convention in Philadelphia. Here is a quick overview of what he was doing prior to attending the Federal Convention of 1787. Pinckney was appointed by Congress along with delegates Nathaniel Gorm of Massachusetts and William Grayson of Virginia to deliver a stern warning to the New Jersey legislature for refusing to comply with a requisition from the previous Congress. On March 13, 1786, Pinckney delivered the message in which he stated, quote, If New Jersey conceives herself oppressed under the present Confederation, let her, through her delegates in Congress, state to them the oppression she complains of, and urge the calling of a general convention of the states for the purpose of increasing the powers of the federal government and rendering it more adequate for the ends for which it was instituted, unquote. A few months later, Pinckney continued his drive in Congress uh, for a convention to revise the powers of the Confederation, but to no avail. Quote, Congress must be invested with greater powers, or the federal government must fall. It is therefore necessary for Congress to either appoint a convention for that purpose, or by requisition to call on the states for such powers as are necessary to enable it to administer the federal government, unquote. Having no success in calling a convention, Pinckney requested a grand committee to begin working on amendments to the Articles of Confederation himself. He was appointed chairman of the subcommittee and drafted seven amendments, which were reported to Congress on August 7th. Congress ignored the amendments as it waited for the outcome of the Annapolis Convention, which was going to be held the following month. Since the Annapolis Convention did not have enough states attend to conduct business, 
The commissioners issued their report recommending that a convention be held in Philadelphia in May the next year with full powers, or what is known as a plenipotentiary convention. The state of Virginia was the first to take action and issued the call for the Philadelphia Convention, inviting all of the other states to attend. The South Carolina legislature issued their commission, empowering their delegates. Here's the portion of Pinckney's commission, which states the authority he has under it. Now, this comes from South Carolina, so let me just read this to you. Quote, to join with such deputies or commissioners, they being duly authorized and empowered, in devising and discussing all such alterations, clauses, articles, and provisions as may be thought necessary to render the federal constitution entirely adequate to the actual situation and future good government of the Confederated States. That was the commission from the South Carolina legislature. Pinckney did not waste any time and got to work acting solely under his commission because, and this is what's incredible, he arrived in Philadelphia with a draft of a complete new system of government. He brought with him a new constitution. <laughs> you probably never heard that. Prior to the convention even beginning, Pinckney was introducing this plan of a new government to the other delegates as they were actually arriving in Philadelphia a week before the convention was uh, convened. Here's the quote from George Reed uh, to John Dickinson uh, des uh, describing Pinckney's draft dated one week before the first working day of the convention. Um, quote, I am in possession of a copied draft of a federal system intended to be proposed if something nearly similar shall not precede it. Some of its principal features are taken from the New York system of government, unquote. He's referring to the draft that Pinckney was sharing with the other delegates. Jacob Broom, check this out, a delegate from Delaware, made this observation about Pinckney's plan before the convention started. Quote, the members of the convention being fully impressed with a sense of this do not talk of separating, but intend at least to attempt some plan. Two legislative branches and one executive seems to be a prevailing sentiment but how extensive their powers will be a weighty subject of consideration. One plan has made its appearance introduced by a Mr. Pinckney of South Carolina. It appears to me to be a compound abstracted from the several constitutions and the Articles of Confederation." Unquote. Amazing. Before the convention even began, Charles Pinckney was presenting a new, complete constitution. Yes, Pinky, Pinckney understood the authority and, he, and the power he had under his own commission. Now, this is fascinating. On May 29th, this is the first working day of the convention, and it opened with Virginia. And here are the notes recorded by Robert Yates from New York. Quote, his Excellency Governor Randolph, a member from Virginia, got up and in a long and elaborate speech showed the defects in the system of the present federal government as totally inadequate to the peace, safety, and security of the Confederation and the absolute necessity of a more energetic government. He closed these, these remarks with a set of resolutions, 15 in number, which he proposed to the convention for their adoption. And as leading principles whereto to form a new government, he then moved that they should be taken up in committee of the whole house. Mr. Pinckney, a member of South Carolina, then added that he had reduced his ideas of a new government to a system, which he read and confessed that it was grounded on the same principles as the above resolutions. So immediately at the very beginning, Virginia offered a new system of government and then Charles Pinckney read his new system of government uh, to the entire convention. Now we get to June 16th. Mr. Pinckney, he thought, now this is where he says he had the power. He thought the convention authorized to go any length in recommending which they found necessary to remedy the evils which produced this convention. There it is. 
He had full authority, Robert Brown. Again, another delegate saying, and not only saying, but acting on it. Charles Pinckney knew that he had the power. Now, another thing that's really interesting. He wrote his observations, which was a speech that was shared throughout the convention, but it was published a month after the, the adjournment of the convention in Philadelphia. In it, he described the articles contained in his system of government, which he presented at the convention. Pinckney was one of the uh, strongest advocates for a convention of the states, along with Alexander Hamilton prior to the federal convention being called. Now, in his observations, Pinckney addressed the failure of Congress in securing additional powers for the Confederation and how the upcoming convention of the states in Philadelphia hopefully will be able to preserve the Union. Quote, that nothing less than a convention of the states could probably prevent a dissolution of the Union. Whether we shall be so fortunate as to concur in measures calculated to remove these difficulties and render our government firm and energetic remains to be proved. A change in our political system is in inevitable. The states have wisely foreseen this and provided a remedy Congress have sanctioned it." Unquote. I also want you to see clearly that Pinckney understood that the purpose of the convention was to create a national government. Here's a couple more quotes from his observations where he makes it specifically clear. Quote, I apprehend the true intention of the states in uniting is to have a firm national government capable of effectually executing its acts and dispensing its benefits and protection, unquote. He continues, quote, and in short of numerous other reforms and establishments, convince me that upon the present occasion, it would be politic in the convention to determine that they will consider the subject de novo or from the beginning that they will pay no farther attention to the Confederation than to consider it as good materials and view themselves as at liberty to form and recommend such a plan as from their knowledge of the temper of the people and the resources of the states will most likely to render our government firm and united. This appears to me far more proper than to attempt the repair of a system, not only radically defective in principle, but which, if it was possible to give it operation, would prove absurd and oppressive." Unquote. It's absolutely asinine to think that the states did not understand that the purpose of the 1787 Federal Convention was to create a firm national government. Virginia called it, they were the host, they introduced a national government in the 15 resolutions known as the Virginia Plan, introduced by Randolph, and then that was quickly followed by Charles Pinckney's uh, complete new system of a national government. Anyone who has honest intentions can clearly see that the framers understood the purpose of the convention and they knew they had the ability, the authority, and the power to propose such a firm national government. Yes, Charles Pinckney was the man with a plan. He worked on calling a convention prior to the Annapolis Convention. In Congress, he proposed amendments to the Articles of Confederation. He acted upon his commission by drafting a new and complete constitution. He shared this constitution with delegates before the convention even started and he presented his constitution for a new system of government and read it to the convention on May 29th. He said at the convention he was authorized to go to any length in recommendations. There you have it, another proof of a delegate claiming they had the authority to propose a new constitution. I don't know about you, but man, this is, this is one that's worth the 10 grand all alone. Okay. So let's recap. We have James Wilson from Pennsylvania, who claimed he had the authority. We have Rufus King from Massachusetts, who claimed he had the authority. And we have Charles Pinckney from South Carolina. Not only did he claim he had the authority, but he produced and presented a complete constitution. Oh, I love him. He's my favorite. The guy is phenomenal. There it is, Robert. I hope you enjoyed learning about this as much as I did in presenting it. To all you Article 5 supporters out there, do me a big favor and share this video. 
uh, and post it and tag Robert Brown and tell him Robert Brown owes Ken Quinn ten thousand dollars for proving him wrong again. Now, stay tuned because I'm bringing in a big dog next time and you will not want to miss it. With all things Article 5, I'm Ken Quinn. Remember, experience must be our only guide. Fear will paralyze us. So fear not. Let's have fun and the truth will prevail. Till next time. Uh -huh.